Welcome to episode 46 of Pink's Picks, Recommendations from a Retired English Teacher. In honor of Asian Pacific Islander Month, today's titles are two novels set in India, The Henna Artist and The Storyteller's Secret. Both pieces depict the rigid misogynistic caste system. Both include vivid visual as well as powerful olfactory imagery. Both are partially epistolary, where the plot is driven by letters. Both feature resourceful female characters, and both were inspired by authors' family members. Alka Joshi wrote The Henna Artist for her mother who had an arranged marriage at 18 and three children by the age of 22. Her mother never had the opportunity to choose whom to marry, when to marry, whether to have children, whether or not to continue her studies, or what to do with her life. But she made sure that Joshi could make all of those choices for herself. In this book, Joshi reimagines her mother's existence as a teenager who escapes an abusive marriage that thus is ostracized by her family and supports herself by becoming both a henna artist and a holistic medicine practitioner. The latter skill she learned from her kindly mother-in-law. The story is set over a 14 month period between 1955 and 1956 when India had just regained its independence after 100 years of British rule. It's primarily set in Jaipur, the pink city, the color of hospitality, with flashbacks both in the tiny village of Ajar as well as Agra, home to the Taj Mahal. There are also some scenes in Shimla in the Himalayan foothills. Storytellers, meanwhile, is a frame tale, a story within a story, beginning in contemporary New York City with Jaya, whose marriage is failing after suffering her third miscarriage. Devastated, she visits her parents' house where a letter arrives announcing the death of her maternal grandfather, a man Jaya never met nor knew anything about. Reeling from the loss of her future family, she decides to travel to India for the first time to research her past family discovering a colorful cast of characters who posthumously helped Jaya reconcile her present. I love Badani's depiction of India in the 1930s and 40s when under Gandhi's influence, Indians were again finding their voice. I love Badani's juxtaposition of reticence with storytelling. Some of her scenes seem a tad corny, but frankly, sometimes a little corny is good. Trust me, there's enough tragedy to compensate. I give it an A. On another note, call me clueless, but I've never heard of the publisher Lake Union. Turns out it's one of Amazon's many publishing imprints. Who knew? Back to the henna artist. I love Joshi's depiction of specific Indian customs as well as universal sibling relationships. I love her discussion of the three types of karma. I love her organization. There is a list of characters there's a glossary of terms, an explanation of the caste system in India, the story of henna, and recipes that appear in the story. I especially love 
that Josie wrote her debut novel at age 62. That gives me hope, let me tell ya. I give The Henna Artist an A also. If you're interested in other novels set in India during the Raj period or British rule, I would suggest Forster's A Passage to India. I would also recommend from episode 12, The Namesake by Jubila Hiri, set in both the United States and India. Next time, I'll be discussing my first foray into books on tape with the tremendously disparate William P. Young's The Shack and Dennis Lehane's Since We Fell. Until then, do your homework. Lord knows I am behind on mine. Bye-bye.